Hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft with your host, Anon Jr. Uh, we are still in Season 0, we are still playing around on the server, and since here in the United States we had a long weekend, I want to go over some of the projects that we did. Uh, but first, behind me you see all these stone bricks and this wonderful little map and the declining sun. <laughs> That's not part of the project, but what is, is we... Spent last week working out a, uh, a little baseline for our rail track because we do eventually want to set up a railway that will run you around everything that we're building and, uh, and take you to various people's bases and whatnot. So we're going to get a station going over here in this corner. And it's going to roughly head that way towards Arcadius's base. It's going to roughly follow this track over to Rayest's uh, Sky Temple of Doom, and uh, it's going to end up on the back side of my castle there. At least for now, that is the end of the plan. We laid out a build pallet using some prismarine and quartz. Uh, I think I think we might have enough, depending on how far apart we need to pace the pillars. Um, that is one of the things that I do want to work on today as we go. But most importantly, I want to show you the things that are inside where the creepers are not. Now, we also expanded the lighting a little bit, too. Still got to work on that direction, though. All right, uh, let's run to safety, because of course it would turn night at the end. And as we go through the door into the backstage, you find a few things have changed. My egg farm has been moved. We'll get to that one in just a second. In its place, I threw some soul sand and some nether wart, because uh, while I have not gotten into too much potion brewing just yet, that is on the horizon. Basically, I want to set up some single potion stations where all I got to do is hit a button and it'll pop out three of whatever potion it is that I'm trying to do. And because uh, I only use about three, maybe four different potions. So having dedicated brewing stations like that is better than try me looking up the uh the recipe every time for uh what do i need to do this i will keep the two brewing stations i have upstairs by the enchanting station as they are so that way on the off chance i need one of the one of the other potions i've got a couple of brewing stands ready to go uh for brewing those up so nothing too much has changed over on this piece other than yeah, the egg farm has been moved. I did move the portal back one. I got tired of these trap doors being in the way every time I use the down elevator. Uh, redid that so those actually fold right, and you'll notice something behind here. I absolutely hate zombie pigmen roaming around my base. That's why I have those two trap doors in the first place. It was to keep the zombie pigmen from roaming around. And uh, the only problem was, when you really did need to use them, they, uh, they're they blocking the portal. So you'd have to occasionally clear them out, and that, that was never fun. So I knocked the wall back just a little bit more, threw down some turtle eggs, which they love to go after, and put a little pit trap. Because <laughs> the uh, zombie pigmen see the trap doors as something that they can walk on, even though they are open, because they're dumb. So they go, oh, there's a block here I can walk on, there's a block there I can walk on, and I got enough room to jump on the egg. That's why the ceiling is so high. And uh, so they try to make their way over there, they fall into the pit, they're not in my way. Uh, realistically speaking, I could probably take these guys down, since I have that back there. But, um, yeah, no. I want to be doubly certain. <laughs> And up this way, this is where a lot of the weekend was spent. Building this guy here at the end. I believe it was two, two or three weeks ago you guys saw me building these guys on air. Where uh, I got my little cow farm going. That seems to be working out really well. Yeah, cooking up some beef and leather. And the sheep farm, I can't remember if I mentioned it last time or not, I ended up having to remove the button from them because the pulse on the lava blade is long enough that the sheep start swimming up it and die in the lava. 
The cows are apparently hardier, so the lava blade doesn't kill them, or they die after the lava blade retracts. Same for the piggies. The sheep are the only one that seem to um, float up and die, and most of their drops get burnt. So I get rid of the button for now. I'm going to figure out if there's some way I can speed up the pulse with the same basic idea at another date. In the meantime, I got the little kill hole here and kill hole there. So that way I can still take them out. All the farms have them, so that way if you wanted the XP for killing the mobs, you can do that. Uh, your choice. So this is the same basic egg farm as what I had before. Bunch of chickens on top of a hopper going into a box, which is full. What's mostly hidden behind there is a little contraption you saw me start working on previously. I showed the first layer, which I had to rebuild with a different design because what I had shown you last time didn't work. I do plan on doing a, a proper tutorial at some point, or maybe I'll just hop into my testing world later this stream and, uh, and go through the basic build process. But the general idea, the way this machine works, is it is a combination egg farm and chicken farm. So these guys start dropping eggs, dropping eggs, dropping eggs, and when I have enough, and for me, enough is a double chest full of eggs. I really don't want more than that. Uh, so once this double chest is full, a locking mechanism locks the hopper on here and starts sending the eggs over to the chicken farm. This is your bog standard chicken farm. You've seen a million and two Minecrafters do it. This is a slightly modified version of the one that Avomance posted. I liked his design because I forgot that the hitbox on hoppers changed. So with the design from Mumbo Jumbo that I used to use all the time, uh, these little guys kept crawling behind into the machinery. <laughs> so uh, as you saw, perfectly timed for the camera. The eggs, when they pass by the box and go up into the feeding mechanism, also trigger the lava blade. So there's no clocks running all the time in the background. The only time the lava blade triggers is when another egg pops out. So these guys will collect in here until they either entity cram and die, or, which, not likely, or another egg comes out while they're adults and kills them. And as you can see, it's produced uh, It's produced a fair amount. This could produce more cooked chicken than it is faster if I drop more guys in there. But I really don't want a repeat of the last server where uh, the cooked chicken farm was producing so much chicken. Uh, that, that was pretty much my only food. That's all I used was cooked chicken, and it was still producing it faster than I was eating it. Um, so... There that is. And that guy takes up a fair chunk of space. I'm not sure what else I'm going to build out that way. I do plan on building this into a larger wheat farm. And moving these two guys into individual cells. In the hopes that that cuts down on the bread production. If there's nobody to toss it to, maybe they won't be tossing any bread to anybody. And um, I'm going to refit this cell, because it's about the same size as these guys. I'm going to refit this cell as a beetroot farm. While beetroots are pretty much useless, and <laughs> most people don't use them, with the impending 1.14, I can use the beetroots and beetroot farm to feed a bone meal and villager trading. Because the villagers in 1.14 will trade. Sorry, did you hear a zombie? I heard a zombie. Oh, 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 too far, too far. Oh, I think I know exactly where he is. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry. Sidebar. I gotta go talk to a zombie about harassing my villagers. Yeah. Unfortunately, all these guys think those villagers are a village, and they want to take care of them. <laughs> so. I really should just go ahead and go sleep, but, you know. Uh, 
never mind. Daylight's coming. All right. Uh, yes. So one dot fourteen. Sorry, distracted by the zombies. So when one dot fourteen comes out, we can use the beet roots to trade with the villagers, and we can pump the beet root and beet root seeds into a composter, and uh, and generate some more bone meal that way. And that will help with some of the other endeavors because at some point over in the community area over there, we will get a tree farm going and that is going to eat up a ton of bone meal. Uh, also, when I find that I'm short on something, I do like using my little nano farm over here and that chews through bone meal quick, about three droppers full. Uh, I still have not figured out why this guy over here on the right seems to run out of bone or runs out of bone meal at a slower rate than these two guys over here. I suspect it has something to do with the way the different dispensers are getting powered, but um, this works good enough that I haven't really devoted as much attention to it as as I probably should. And. Uh, there's one other really big project that I worked on this weekend, and we needed to go take a trip out to Arcadius's Guardian Farm, or as Reyes likes to put it, the Angry Fish Farm. So let's get through there. Yep, and again, I do that because I don't like them wandering about. I wish there's a way you could carpet or uh, put something on the in on the Nether portals to make them not a spawnable surface. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's some cheaty admin command thing you could do to keep the nether portal open and sub in glass instead of obsidian, but uh, yeah, we don't do that kind of thing. Alright, long trip. I was also half tempted to start building a rail system in here so that way I can just hop in a cart and head out to the portal over by the uh, guardian farm. But with as many different directions as this thing is going, I'm not sure that's going to be a useful idea. Um, although I wouldn't mind expanding this out so you could fly, so it's big enough to fly down. Maybe another day. Especially since I know there's a fair amount of lava over on my left there. That's why the torches stopped, because I kept running into lava buckets. And uh, a lot of this area is, oh, there we go, is exposed to the outside. Uh, that is a very, very fragile shell. All right, last time I tried to trip through the portal, that, uh, that ended up going very, very badly. And if you haven't been on the stream in a while, or you haven't seen a recording in a while, you'll notice the portal has moved. Arcadius has decided yet again to change the cap on his guardian farm over here. So he's going to build a different top. Wasn't quite getting the feel for what he had wanted before. And look at that beautiful pixel art. Uh, one of the other servers that the three of us played on for a little while, um, Arcadius became so well known for his pixel art People were dropping off random shulker boxes of sand, gravel, and dye, and commissioning requests. <laughs> we had a nice uh, Pit Boy, Mega Man, um, and a few other things too. So I went to AFK for some Prismarine for our rail system, since we're doing all the rails in Prismarine and Quartz, and found out that the single double chest that we had going here was a really bad idea. That's not a lot of storage. And I wanted to expand on that a little bit. So, see if I can do this very carefully because somebody loves their efficiency. And, yeah, with strength and haste, <laughs> you end up punching through a lot more than you expect to here. Ask me how I know. So, let me be very careful. <sighs> okay. That still worked out all right. Yeah. So, I left all the hoppers and the hopper minecarts under the soul sand as they were. 
I just redirected them all so they fed into this guy, this little dropper. He's got a clock on the back of him that if there is one or more items in here, it will pulse out and dispense into this water stream, whatever has collected. And then it goes down this water stream into this area, which, uh, mind your step. Yeah, I found out just how big that is over on this side the hard way. So it's going to go through this water stream. I had a little trouble turning the corner, so I just threw two hoppers and called it done. <laughs> Add a little dispenser down at the bottom hooked up to a redstone clock. Same kind of clock as what that guy over there has. And it pulses them up into the soul sand water elevator and into your bog standard storage sorter system. The problem that I ran into is originally I had a hopper here where this glass was which allowed enough buffering that things filtered a little more reliably. But again, back to the hitboxes, I forgot that the hitbox on the hopper is not a square. It actually follows the contour of the hopper, which meant that items that were coming up the elevator were getting caught under this lip under the hopper. And so we were losing items that were going up, getting caught and never getting pushed over into the hoppers. So I changed that hopper for a chunk of glass. I really should have moved this whole water column back one but we were getting towards the end of a fair amount of frustration, uh, particularly with trying to get items to round that corner. And, um, and there we go. If you've never seen how these work, you've got a row of hoppers or a water stream as an input stream. Right below that, you've got a set of items. The idea is this redstone torch locks the hopper so nothing can flow through and then you fill it up with some sort of filter item uh, you can use any item you want the the best thing to do though is to use an item that is not generated by whatever it is that you're going to be feeding into it and optimally to rename it to something so that way you don't have to worry about it stacking uh, so i Made some filter fish since we have an abundance of fish over here. And then you stack up whatever it is that you want to filter into this hopper. So when items come across into this hopper here, if it is a prismarine shard, this will go from 41 to 42, which will change the signal strength coming off of this comparator. So right now there's just enough signal strength to get to the edge. One more item is going to push it down here. And by powering this block here, you'll now be able to pull power and turn off the torch. By turning off the torch, it allows an item to drop through into the boxes. And then once that one item goes out of the filter, it will no longer have enough power to depower that redstone torch, in which case it locks the hopper. Rinse repeat for every item that goes through. So we've got another one for prismarine crystals. We've got another one for cod. Uh, honestly, we, we could pump all the cod up into the garbage disposal up at the top. And uh, I, th I think everybody would be just as happy. Matter of fact, I, I could probably rig all the cod to just, you know, dispense into the lava field over here. And I don't think anybody would be bothered by it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, by at least sorting them out, it makes it a little bit easier. And uh, so we end up with our prismarine shards, our prismarine crystals, our cod, and everything else. Some items may have come from the weekend build session, like our tuna fish. What? Tuna's the chicken of the sea, right? No. <laughs> I needed some space in one of my boxes as temporary storage, and uh, so I took a stack of eggs, tossed them about, and uh, since I did not feel like trolling Arcadius with a bunch of chickens running out of base this time, especially since I wasn't sure if he was going to like how this ended up turning out uh, space-wise and aesthetically. Uh, I wasn't going to leave all the chickens running around. Although, now that it's done... Nah, I'm not going to do that to him. Uh, 
So anyway, this is where all the overflow, all the other items that aren't those three end up going. And unfortunately, because I don't have that leading hopper going into the input chain, some of the prismarine shards end up going over into the overflow chests. It's a very small amount, usually when more than two or three drop at a time. And uh, anyway, that does seem to work out pretty well. Although we found out the hard way that if you try to AFK over here in the backstage, it, it cuts off after a while. And we, we didn't quite figure out why. We didn't really have time to dig too deep into it. Um, I could probably make some guesses as to be, because right now we are outside of the um, Sea Temple area, so I'm not sure if that affects spawning or not. I wouldn't think it would, because when I AFK'd to test it, I was waiting up here. Arcadius wanted to wait in the back room because he was worried about these guys doing damage to him. Although, the way this is set up, as long as you're belly up to the iron trapdoors, you should be fine. Um, no, I'm not going to turn that on. We got the little button over there that triggers the redstone chain, so that way the dispensers at the top will drop some water and provide a spawnable area. And the, that same button will turn it off. Can get a little interesting to hit when you've got a bunch of, uh, bunch of mobs dropping. And that took up, between that and the chicken farm, that took up most of the time I had to spend on on the server. And it was fun. We got a few things done. Arcadius has been using some of his prismarine to build a mob dropper over here. He's trying to build his own little mob farm, kind of sort of half remembering how it goes. He asked me to try to piece together the redstone for this because he's pretty sure he built everything else right um, as you can hear these platforms will at least spawn some stuff although I'm not sure if he's far enough above the ocean floor and yeah so I may take a stab at trying to work out how to how to get all this squared away during the uh, during the live stream. I wanted to quickly recap everything and then go from there. All right, let me get back to a bed. Take a look at that in the light of day. To the ledge. I forgot which side the bed was on. Arcadius does have some uh, ideas for the design he's going to put on there, and he's going to put on there. Uh, there are some concerns with the recessed lighting like he did there. Namely, he's a little worried about hitting the redstone line that powers the droppers, although that should be easy to move. And he's got a cactus farm going where that stone brick is. Uh, although that, that can be moved pretty easily. What cannot be moved easily is the giant lava lake that is behind that wall there. Uh, ask us how we know about it. <laughs> I came over one day to help Arcadius uh, clear out this area down to bedrock. And uh, yeah, we, 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 had some, we had some struggles with that lava lake over there, that one over there. And it kind of curves around into that area there. Let's just say having somebody around with a bucket and a few other items was always nice. And I just noticed this over here. I was kind of wondering, is there a witch hut over here? No. That's a shame. Because uh, if there was a witch hut over here, I would have asked Arcadius to build a witch farm. The last server we played on that was not our own, he built a really, really nice witch farm. I don't know whose model he used, but it was very, very nice. Alright, so. How do we want to do this? Let's grab our backpack. 
And let's grab... Oop, I just need one. An ender chest and a crafting table. And we'll grab some redstone stuff. Okay, good. Got water buckets and everything. I need to make some... Uh, dis almost everything I need to make some dispensers. Yeah. And if I need string, I can go to the... Uh, spider farm we got over in the hills there. So, what is it that he was trying to do? Alright, uh, let me grab this bottom. Can I make it? Oh, 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 ow. Oof. Flying ace, I am not. There we go. Okay. So we need to power that dispenser. No, we need to eat. Then we need to figure out how we're going to power that dispenser. To dispense the water. Alright, the nice thing about dispensers is if you power even an air block above them, they have some weird quasi-connectivity thing. So, I'm going to need one, two, three. Let me grab four observers, three more dispensers, and a fistful of redstone dust. Let's see if I can get something towering up, because I'm thinking... Right, I said four observers, right? Yeah, four observers. I need a bunch of redstone. I'm going to need... Ooh. There we go. Okay. I need a bunch more cobble. Bring some lumber. three of those guys. Oh well. I've never found having an overabundance to be all that burdensome. Alright, um... I need to cobble for the observers, didn't I? Two, three, four. Ooh, a little low on the cobblestone. Alright, I'll have to do something about that. I want him looking for changes. That's the basic idea. Gonna need three more buckets of water. You know what, let me just go ahead and make a couple of buckets. And it's not like I gotta worry about the water. Alright, da da da, one, two, three. Worried about floating down. <laughs> what am I going to do? Die from falling into the water? Although. Oh. <laughs> Forgot. Half the reason I went up there was for my wrench. One of the data packs we have... 
gives us this beautiful, beautiful wrench tool that we can use to rotate redstone and terracotta, glazed terracotta. So if you're trying to do a build like Rayest's, you don't have to figure out the weird Eusidian, etc. to uh, make that work. There we go. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, well, shoot. Okay, that part works. Facing west, down, up. Facing up. Ooh. Come on. West, down, up. East, north, west, down, up. Except I don't think he was, uh... I don't know if he was going to build another level up or not. All right, what I need right now, though... ...is a redstone block. Uh, or maybe I can trigger it with flint and steel. I could just do this the easy way. Yeah. Why not do things the easy way? Alright, so... That means that all I need to do... Update on. I'm pretty sure I've got some of this backwards. Up. that trigger all of them yes it did, did. all right so far so good <laughs> nappy time find out is he adding more levels down or up Oop. Oop, oh, oh, 
fly. Alright. Trigger an update and make sure. It This is not what I was hoping for. Are you kidding me? Alright, besides, I gotta figure out what kind of update I'm gonna trigger over this guy anyway. Um, so, let's do this. Let's go. Bam! Which is enough of an update anyway. a clock that will trigger a pulse wait a little bit and then trigger another pulse I've done something like this on my other farm uh, except I had a little bit more room to work with I'm going to see if I have in my collection of screenshots. Excuse me while I try to grab some screenshots. I'm pretty sure I've got a picture of the clock I used on the other mob farm. Is that you? Sort of. Alright, that was the original design. That was the design I went with. something. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. So what I need now are two, three, four. I'm going to need two hoppers because we're going to start with ye old Etho Hopper Glock. And let's see, I'm going to need, need space for that. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. All right, so it's going to go over here. You have no idea how much it burns my soul that I cannot center this. <laughs> Ooh, so if I go here, it's gonna give me hopper, repeater, block, hopper, repeater, block. All right, that'll work. So for the ether, <laughs> Ether, Etho Hopper Clock. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to get two hoppers going into each other. So that lets items go from this hopper into this hopper and then back. We're going to need two... We're going to need to move my redstone box. Hopefully I don't fall into that hole. And, uh, alright, so I'm going to need... Quartz. That's right. I was looking for... I'm going to need one, two, three. Three repeaters. 
three repeaters means I'm going to need nine torches. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> Uh, 13 repeaters, so that means I'm going to need 23 um, Twenty-three torches. Arcadius still has an overabundance that he has not moved over to the community center. Oop. Since this is his project, we'll raid some of his supplies. I mean, you know, should have known that was going to happen. Instructions, there we go. All right. So we're going to need. What am I, oh, 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 I'm going to need more redstone dust too. I am probably going to have to go. 11? What am I? I needed 13. Because I needed 26 torches. Because I am not always the smart. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. 13 repeaters. The idea is that I want enough time for them to spawn on the platform. And then the second pulse. So that's what the hopper clock's for. Um, I'm going to need to turn that into at least one block. I am going to need a fair amount of dust, so I'm not getting rid of the dust just yet. I'll get the sticks out of the way, the string out of the way. Uh, I need... Ooh. I hope that's enough cobble. No iron. Oh, no. I need lumber. Because I need two pistons. Bam. Okay. So. I'm going to take a repeat, a comparator out of that, a comparator out of that, basically. Um. As long as there are items in here, a redstone signal will be going out. And I'm going to need three blocks. Duh. Um, all the tired. So that way it's clearly part of the build. Set these guys down, then I'll explain what's going on. That redstone block is going to lock one of these hoppers. So I can throw half a stack of items in there. 
which is going to cause a signal to come out of the comparator, which is going to power this block, which is going to power this redstone dust, which is going to power this piston, piston, pushing the redstone block in front of this guy, which is going to lock him. And that's... That was supposed to... Uh, oh, is my shulker box here causing problems? Yes, my shulker box there is causing problems. Okay. <laughs> So, two, one, bam. This is empty. What did I do wrong? What a youth. That guy should be powered. It should extend that guy. Let's try this again. From the top. I've done this a few times already. Because I'm trying to explain it on air. Looking at a diagram of the working clock. You know, I will have a nice long think about this one and come back to this project a little bit later. Because what is supposed to happen? Oh, space. Hmm. I was not expecting that problem. I'll have to organize this part a little bit better, too. <laughs> That kind of day, folks. That kind of day. Alright. Grab this guy. Put him back in there. I'll put those guys in there for now. And I don't even have room for them all. Get that guy back in there. what is supposed to happen is oh, not a screenshot <laughs> yeah this guy's powered so the signal coming out of here is supposed to power this block which powers this redstone which powers this piston to push the redstone block over here unlocking this hopper allowing the items to flow into here Pretty sure those are not supposed to be in subtract mode, because that would have taken a signal from somewhere else. 32. That guy depowers, but this guy is supposed to push. Interesting. Not in the fun sort of interesting way, either. What could be... What could be interfering? All right, let's go back and take a look at our other... Actually, you know what? That's going to be a lot of round trips back and forth, so... Ooh, 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 watch out for the creepers! Let me... log off here real quick. Not the safest place to be. There's going to be something there when I uh, respawn, isn't it? <laughs> That's my luck. All right.
Let's take a look at this thing back in the redstone testing world. All right. Don't mind the mess. Not quite as extensive as uh, <clears throat> other testing worlds you've seen. This is the guy that we have built under under our base. And this is the clock that... Oh, were those supposed to be sticky pistons? Is it really that simple? It's probably really that simple. Because we got... Uh, yeah, I left that empty because I didn't want the clock running while I wasn't in the world. There's no torches or anything on the underneath. We got two hoppers running into each other. Comparators running off. Let's, uh... Yeah. So that powers that up. And this is the idea, is that we've got a signal which is set to do one pulse, which goes out this block and turns that on and then goes through another delay and comes back through. Okay, so I think that was the only thing I missed is those weren't supposed to be regular pistons. Those are supposed to be sticky pistons. So we get our pulse and then our delay to turn the water off. Here, we'll come back up this way a little bit. So that turns it off. So this is leaving plenty of times for mobs to spawn. And then it's going to pulse. Bam. So we got one tick that comes up this way, turns all the droppers on, and then another tick that comes on a little bit of a delay to turn them off. Oh, and you can hear the water going in there. All right, let me... There we go. All right. Do I have flowing water in all of here now? No? Good. Bats. <laughs> and there I was testing everything else. Oh. Hi. I didn't realize you were there. If I had known, I wouldn't have left you there. Let me, uh, put you out of my misery. There we go. Alright. So that is the basic mob dropper that we got going over at our base. We're going to set up a similar clock on a similar delay over at Arcadius's base. I am 98% sure that I used a half stack in here. Um, and since I'm here... I might as well show you the other bit with the chicken farm. Because we're here. Pay no attention to this. For the life of me, I don't remember what it was I was trying to figure out about redstone. <laughs> so, let's clear out some of the decoration and whatnot. Because we got a few different things going on here. I'm going to be a little careful as I pop stuff off. Okay, so most of this you have seen before, like the part where you put the chickens in here and it goes down into here, and then it goes into this chest. The way the comparator is set up is it is going to compare the power strength from this box to the power strength of the redstone block, which is 15 which means the only time it's going to match and therefore output a signal is when this box is full. So if we were to take 
even one egg out, one egg short of a full box. One egg short of a full box is not full power, so no power comes. So until that box is completely full, there is no signal coming out of here which means that this redstone block is up, which means that this torch is powered, locking the bottom hopper. With that bottom hopper locked, that means that the only thing, things can go from here, down into here, into the box. That's it. The box is the only lo valid location. Once the box fills up, we now get a power signal off of the comparator because this is equal to this. And it's going to do two things. It's going to come in here, and it's going to split into this, which is locking that hopper there, and into this, which is powering that piston there. When that piston is powered, it drops the redstone block, which powers this repeater, which powers this block, which depowers this torch. <laughs> do I need to go through that one more time? So we get a signal off of the comparator. We lock that hopper. Power this piston, which through a little bit of Rube Goldberg magic will depower that torch, unlocking this bottom hopper. So things can go into this hopper, but cannot flow out into the box because it is locked. Technically speaking, that is unnecessary because that box is full. If the box wasn't full, we wouldn't have the signal. But I didn't really think about that until I said it out loud. <laughs> so what happens there so from that bottom hopper they're going to go into this dropper and we got a little bit of a dropper tower to dropper elevator to bring them up to the level of the next farm so we got a comparator signal coming off of the bottom dropper so that way, as soon as the first item, actually, I can just go ahead and go. So an item is in there, it has power, which powers that block, which depowers that torch, which opens up this hopper clock, which has an item in there. As long as that torch is powered, the item is locked into this hopper. When it becomes depowered, it moves the item over here, which draws a power off of this comparator, which powers this block. And that starts this fun little torch tower and kind of pulses everything up, turning torches alternately on and off. So that block gets powered, which depowers that torch that you can barely see down there, which unpowers this box, allowing those two to turn back on. That torch turning on powers this dropper and this dropper. And so the rippling effect of power is going to ripple up all the droppers, including that guy over there. And it's going to bring them... Oop, no, no, that part was important. Which is why it really should have been wool. I was really trying to make sure that uh, I had important components in wool. <laughs> so, that dropper brings it into this hopper chain. Which then puts it into that dropper. Or, sorry, this hopper. Once this hopper has an item, it powers this block. The observer notes that there has been a state change, which powers that bit of redstone dust, which triggers this observer, which powers this bit of redstone dust, which triggers both droppers, or both dispensers. The top one has the bucket of lava, the bottom one has the egg, so the egg gets spat out at the half slab, which hatches the egg, or not, depending and also dispenses the lava, so you don't have any clocks running that don't need to be running, which is a little more server-friendly than having this thing constantly running all the time, or uh, having a timer set for the lava blade like I've done on previous versions of the chicken farm. And that makes this whole deal a little more server-friendly, 
And this is pretty much what we have in Coffee Craft. Except I found out the hard way that I did not actually need that pulse right there. I had thought I needed to add a little bit of a redstone clock to make sure that if there's more than one item in here, it pulsed properly. That was unnecessary. So it works out really fine as long as you leave it just like that. So the basic chicken farm idea with the two dispensers and the circle of observers, that is something that Avomance came up with. All I did was figure out how to add the dropper chain from my egg farm with a box's worth of storage. You could actually set this up with more than a box's worth of storage. You can have like a couple other boxes going off to the side. Just make sure that it is this top box, this last one that you want full, that you're pulling the power from and doing the comparison. Make sense? Not until you try it. Yeah, that is going to be the key. Um, I want to start teaching redstone. I know that I do not know a lot about redstone. I am not ready for Psycraft or anything that crazy. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I want to start trying to make putting together two different machines possible for the redstone intermediate. So this is not going to be beginner level redstone. This is not going to be high level redstone. This is going to be for the people who are in the middle. You're beyond the basic block by block, block, by block tutorial. In other words, you, you want something more than me just saying, put your double chest here, put this here, put this here, put this here, and voila, you have a machine. I want to explain how it all works and help you learn how to figure out, okay, so I need some way to tell the box is full. What are the ways I can tell the box is full? I need some way to get the items from this place to that place. What are the different options for getting items from here to there? How can I figure out which one makes sense in the context of what I'm trying to build? And do that level of redstone. That is my ultimate goal. Um, right now with scheduling, I haven't been able to achieve that goal just yet. But uh, look for it in the future on the YouTube channel. Alright, so with that, now that I know what I am missing on the Coffee Craft server, I hopefully will not die to a creeper explosion the second I log in. Maybe? Hopefully? Possibly? I really want to take a drink, but the second I do, that's when I will log in <laughs> and find out that there's some zombie ready to eat my face. No, it's actually daylight. I was not expecting that. All right, so let me drop my backpack there. Let me get my ender chest. Grab my crafting table. Get my redstone box. Grab two slime balls and pick up this guy. Pick up this guy and make them sticky pistons put that guy there put that guy there oops I'm gonna grab my wrench because the weird angles you gotta put things at to get up oh, of course BAM Let's see if this works before I go any further. There we go. <laughs> uh, and after getting done saying that I really want to start teaching redstone for the life of me, I have never been entirely certain why that has to be a sticky piston instead of a regular piston. But obviously, that is a difference that matters. So I'll have to look that one up and fill you in on a later episode. Now, the nice thing about the Etho Hopper Clock 
is you can change how fast this moves with a greater degree of precision by adding or removing items. If you want a really long wait, you can add multiple stacks of items. If you want it shorter, add less. Obviously that one that we did on the chicken farm was really quick and that only had one item in there. So what I need to do now is I need to figure out where I'm going to take the signal because I've got a couple things that have to happen with it. I need to split the signal and I need a delay circuit. So let's say I grab this guy off of here, right? So when that goes there, that's going to power that, which is going to power this block. And I need, I need to take two signals off of the block, right? space out of that anyway. Alright. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So what I really need is to take... Nope. Oh. Need more space. I do this here, do this here, do that there. Do I have enough room to then, no, oh, unless I go this way, right? No. Because if I move this out one more to loop around this way on a delay, I'm going to start messing with that guy there. No. That might be it. Take that off there. I want to get two of those guys going in. A power. Gonna want a repeater. And a little bit of a delay. Going into this guy, going into this guy, going into my block. And I'm going to need my delay circuit to power. And then I'll get one more bit of redstone dust over the angry face. Yeah. Alright. 
Alright, so that should give me a pulse. Let me check. There we go. Alright, so that gives me two pulses. Basically what we're doing is we're powering this redstone line. And we're sending power into the comparator. And on a little bit of a delay, we're sending more power into the comparator. Except the two power levels are going to end up being such that this one is greater. Turning this off. But... Because we got the delay, there is going to be a brief second where this power is less than this power. In which case this block will be powered and it's going to send that out. So we get a short pulse of power coming off of this. One of which is going to come around here into this guy and trigger that. Now I just need to build the delay circuit. And I've got... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they're all set to four ticks delay. So I just need to figure out how, in this tight space, I'm going to arrange ten of these guys to come back in. Two, three. Little dot. And we'll go there. Um, Crank up that delay. <laughs> oh, wait. That one is actually not set to any delay. At least not in the original. Alright, let me finish connecting all these guys up. And then what I'll do is I'll add this last dot there. So. This is going to do its thing. It's going to get to 32. We should get is a pulse which will come across there and then on a delay we'll get our second pulse Oops. now I just need to get this on the reverse um, or I can just go down to each layer and That's not traveling down like it's supposed to. Okay. Well, that solves part of my problem anyway. Uh, hmm. Well, what are my options? I need something that's going to cause an update on the sky. Could go back. All right, all right. Just wait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that redstone dust there. Oop. I'm gonna go through all these guys real quick. I grab the bucket. Grab the water. Fine. I'll do this one next. Come on. 
This is what a lot of the weekend was like. <laughs> Try to struggle. Trying to get this to work. Because I am most definitely an advanced amateur on this one. Actually, no. Advanced amateur probably is not right. Uh, believe it or not, there are technical terms for levels of skill acquisition. If you look at the stuff that the uh, Dreyfus brothers have put together in adult learning circles, we use the Dreyfus model uh, for describing who's where at what level. And so you've got your absolute beginner, your advanced beginner, your novice, intermediate, and so on and so forth. There are well-defined levels for uh, for each stage. Oh, that's right, because that changed. All right, let me grab... Add some sticks in here somewhere, right? Yep. And then I need two more torches. I'm going to need two. Oh. Yep. No, no, no. That's right. Leave that there. We'll connect that up right there, and next go around, let's make sure this works as intended before I finish putting it together. Alright. So. That powers, that pulses, which hits that. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. That's, that's not right at all. I got too many things connecting that shouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> That's why we checked before we added the final bit right there. Of course, if I'd remembered that that guy would have changed when I changed that bit of redstone dust, I wouldn't have gone through all the trouble with the buckets. So I'll wait and take care of that in just a minute. All right. Uh, so what I can do is I can go clean this up a little bit. And we'll just move these guys down one more. So bam. Gives me a little more room to work with anyway. I could just come straight back. Nope, 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 nope. do is I'm going to put a block there which will power the block which will power that redstone on his face. So we get the one pulse there and then we get the next pulse on delay. Yeah, that should work. I should be able to put that guy there. goes next. There we go. Did you hear it? Sweet. That just means that I need to turn this off real quick. While I reverse all the buckets again. I guess I'll get pretty good at this before this is all said and done. Nice thing about this, I'm flying into water. <laughs> Makes it marginally safer. Alright. Oh. 
mine the ledge. should now be able to do this and the buckets dispense should be enough time to push the mobs off and then the buckets retract all right they are retracted they dispense nope not yet That should be time for them to spawn, time for them to spawn. They dispense. Water should hit the edge. No. Okay. So what this is telling me is we do not have enough delay. on delay. Alright, that's on delay, that's on delay. Those are all delay. Oh, that can be delayed a little bit more. Nice thing about using all these repeaters is it does allow you to fine-tune the delay. There are better ways of getting that. This is the easiest way. So the water's dispensed. And it's not reaching the edge before we get there. Hey, Arcadius, do you mind feeding the puppy? And I'll have a couple of questions for you before you go. Alright, let me turn that off real quick. So, what I need to do is I need to manufacture just a little bit more delay, because the problem is the water is not getting to the edge of the platform, so it's not going to push the mobs off. What I might just do... Just throw some more repeaters at the problem. <laughs> so let me go craft up. Uh, let's just make two more. I did it again. Okay. I said I wanted to make two more repeaters, and I just grabbed myself enough to make one more. Two more repeaters, which will allow us to add eight more ticks of delay, and we can easily pop one in right there. Where else can we add a little more delay? See how far the water is actually going. Hmm. Maybe it's not the delay. We're getting oh. because that is going from a state of powered to unpowered. So it's powering and then unpowering. We might actually not have needed <laughs> as much delay as we put in there. Uh, 
so let's do it this way. We'll go bam, we'll go bam. And we'll let it run. That's right, because the power is not traveling down. Why is the power not traveling down? I'm not flying all the way over there. Could hunt down some videos that show easier ways of doing this, but uh, I'm stubborn. How do I want to do this? Ooh. There is another option with this. What I could do is I could go and make another observer, but I need need cobblestone. Alright, let's grab another observer. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, bugger. There we go. And we'll go like that. And maybe this observer will trigger the next observer. Working on it. <laughs> this is where you wanted all the clock machinery, right? You just asked for a design, so I'm going to give you a design, and uh, you can take a screenshot and follow it. <laughs> as soon as I get this finished, I got a. Uh, I think I got these buckets on reverse again. Bane of my existence. You know, let me double check with this last one here. Nope. Is it working on that one, but not this one? not enough to power that guy.
No, that's not right either. I need to do something with that guy there. trigger that guy there. What did I do differently on that farm? Oh, that's right. No, that's not right. What in the world? Hmm. I need the Benny Hill theme song is what I need. Because that is a pulse traveling uh, on the mob farm on my end. That is a pulse traveling up a torch tower. So it is still... It is still a regular pulse. If I put an observer here and it gonna flash across so it's gonna detect once for the power and then once for the not power. Oh okay, okay, okay. Think what I really need to do. is switch up the order on this, these guys. Deploy! Or Featherfall. That, that, that can work too. <laughs> uh, okay. I need to grab some more rockets soon too. Yep. <laughs> Matter of fact. Soon as I land, I need to get work. Ah, oh, are you kidding me? Seriously, dude. I'm trying to build this for you, and you're gonna do that to me. All right, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. Gotcha. He took my backpack and all the stuff I was using to build his clock and logged off. All right. Then I guess I'm going to go do something else. Let me stop by his ender chest over here. 
grab my rocket box. And head to the portal. do we have on our list over here? Farm. Still gotta find a design for that one. Gotta redesign the trading center. Need to figure out what we're gonna do about the new villager breeder and iron farms for when 1.14 comes out. Uh, those are gonna be separate buildings. And all three of those, the trading center, the iron farm, and the villager breeder, all have to be at least 160 some odd blocks away. I've heard some people say 160, others say 164. Uh, for my own sanity, I'm going to go ahead and say 164. Uh, I'll probably make it more than that. What I'm thinking of doing is locating the spawn chunk again and putting the iron farm down at bedrock. Because the nice thing about the new iron farms, they do not require sky access. So you don't have to worry about whether or not, you know, the villagers and the doors and all that can see the sky. Um, let me harvest this while I'm thinking about it. You don't have to worry about uh, sky access, whether or not they can see the sky. So I'll probably toss the villager farm, I'm sorry, the iron farm under the ground. Um, I am thinking about taking, uh, taking the uh, villager breeder then and building it in the sky above the iron farm and making sure that they are more than 165 blocks away in both directions from where we will be on the ground that way that way we should have plenty of distance between them all uh, I want to say the spawn chunk is somewhere over by these hills I know it's not far from where we all started building um, hey buddy Put you out of your misery. Is there another one? No, there was another one. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. You can go. Oh, no. Oh. Creepers, creepers everywhere. No, the spawn is not in the swamp. It was in the hills somewhere around... I can't remember if it was where we excavated out or if it was further back closer to my base. Um, yeah. We lost a lot of items on that one. Okay, so I'll have to fix that creeper hole. <laughs> All right, I'm going to need a couple stabs, two slabs, one, two, three stairs, two stair, and some dirt. No, no slabs, two stairs and dirt. Because I do try to repair my divots.
But anyway, one of the things that I definitely want to make sure we do with the villager farm, though, is because an excessive amount of villagers will really mess with server memory and performance. Set up an on-off switch so that way we can turn the breeder on or off, um, depending on if we need more, more villagers or not. Um, yeah, that ought to be enough there. I know that's more than I needed, but I suddenly forgot the number that I needed. Short-term memory something or other. Away we go. But, uh, yeah. Because I, I, I want the villager breeder to run when we need the villagers, but not when we don't. Um, that shouldn't be too hard to do, because the basic I two dirt short. Are you kidding me? Do we have any dirt in the community storage? I should have checked there first. I don't know why I didn't check there first. I mean, it's only right behind me. It's only the absolutely giant building right behind me. All right, uh, if I were Rayest, I would probably put it in turn. I should know, since we helped her sort all this in a previous episode. <laughs> ah, okay. There's my two dirt. <laughs> oh my, okay. Am I skilled enough to pull this off? Ish. That was a few more rockets that I wanted to spend, but eh. I got the farms. So anyway, um... The way the villager breeders work is, as long as they have a free bed, they will produce more kiddos. So you see a lot of the villager breeder designs. They've got uh, two full-grown adults and then four beds. So they will always think, oh, we got to breed up two more villagers. And you set it up so that way the villager kids can run into the trap and the villager adults cannot. And basically, I'll leave it set up so that way the two kids fall into a holding cell that we can either trigger for them to fall safely down to where we want them or, uh, or leave them up where they're at. And if we leave them up where they're at, they'll see the village, ha village has four people in it and we'll stop breeding until we turn the village on, drop the two villagers that are there down to where we are, and let them continue about their business. But, uh... It's been a little while since I... Yeah. I really think the spawn chunk's over here by this hill. I'll have to go look up, uh... How to find that out again. Alright. So, still a little bit of redstone work. Still trying to figure out why that why that pulse wasn't working the way I thought it would I think it's because instead of actually getting the power which this one is it's uh, it's getting a quick pulse from the observer which is turning it on and off so maybe the observers were the wrong way to go on that one uh, I'm trying to figure this one out myself without hitting reference videos because that is the best way to sharpen your skills is to actually try to figure it out for yourself for a few go rounds somewhere around here should be the back door to the redstone machine that's running all that probably that right up there isn't it Yep, 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 yep. Alright, uh... Ooh. 
Isn't that an interesting problem? I don't want to go breaking it. Because obviously I'm going to struggle if I uh, need to fix it again. Alright. Um, time to do some admin type stuff. Game mode spectator. I need to get a proper camera count is what I need to do. Yeah, so if you look here, this is the same basic idea as the clock we set up in Arcadius's base. Um, took a little damage on that one. So we've got our hopper clock going. I got 32, half a stack going back and forth. And it's going to hit this. Fire off a pulse, which will go into this torch. We'll flash everything up. And then a delay is going to loop around this way and flash it again, which will turn it off. But I think... Yeah, because the torch is only hitting the droppers the once, and the observer is dropping them twice... That's where the problem is. Yeah. Okay. Because the uh, observers emit two pulses. Not one. Hmm. Alright. Uh guess what I'm going to be thinking about between now and next week. <laughs> now, again, I know... Look. I know I can go and look at some of the other videos. I probably will eventually break down and reference one of the other videos. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep futzing with that since it is getting close to stopping time right now and I do have to be up for work tomorrow morning. I am going to... Quit. Not quit. I'm going to cut off the stream for the moment, and uh, and I will see you all next week. Hopefully, I will be able to start producing videos soon. Um, I want to do the server tour. I want to go through a little bit more detail on a couple of the different redstone machines that we're using, particularly stuff like the chicken farm where I'm adapting somebody else's design and adding a new twist to it. Um, and just go from there. So with that said, we, uh, we stream Coffee Craft on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. That's minus 4 UTC still, I think. I don't think everybody's gotten on the daylight savings time yet. And on Thursdays, so in two days, I am doing Games Revisited, where I look at classic games and give them a fresh look. Yeah, so this will either be a nostalgia trip if you played it back in the day, or a chance to be exposed to some classic games if you didn't see them the first time around or never got a chance to play through. We're currently going through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. We're three episodes in, so that's that really quick to catch up there. And if I've got it right, we should be doing it for another... Uh, all right. There's about 60 hours worth of content. I'm doing a three-hour stream. So <laughs> that's about 20 weeks. We're three weeks in, so that should be about 17 more weeks, and then we'll move on to the next game. Uh, those are rough guesstimates. I'm trying to make sure that anything that requires grinding, I do off-camera, so you don't have to endure that, uh, unless you want to turn that into a Q&A time. That is up to anybody who is actually listening. If there's anybody out there. <laughs> and on Fridays, uh, it, so Games Revisited starts at 6 p.m. on Thursdays. And on Fridays at 7 p.m., we do World of Tanks with a couple of friends. Uh, jokingly calling it the 47% because, well, we make the top half possible. And uh, the idea is to be far more entertaining and encouraging a positive community atmosphere not what's developed here of late. 
I do have plans for a couple others that I would like to launch in the very near future, so keep an eye on my website over at AnonJr.com and or up on Twitter at AnonJr, although I'm not as social on the social networks as I should be. So if you don't see a lot coming out of there, that it's not that you're missing anything. I just haven't been on in a while. And all the video archives are on our YouTube channel. Links can be found on uh, the Mixer and Twitch profiles and at anonjunior.com. So have fun, enjoy, and I will bid you adieu.